Welcome to the third in our series of videos about how to set up your XMC1. In this video, we're going to show you how to configure the inputs on your XMC1 so it will act just the way you want it to. All of the configuration settings we'll be discussing in this video can be found under the Setup Inputs menu. We're going to configure HDMI 1, so please select HDMI 1 from the list of inputs. The first option you'll see is Name. This option lets you enter a friendly or descriptive name for the input you're configuring. For example, you might want to rename HDMI 1 to Blu-ray. That way, when you select this input, Blu-ray will show up on the display and on your OSD. To set this option, you simply dial in the name by using the left and right arrows to move between the letters and the up and down arrows to change each letter to the one you want. When you've got the name the way that you want it, simply use the left arrow to back out of that field. The next option you'll see is Audio Input. With an HDMI input, most people will choose to use the audio coming in over the HDMI connection along with the video. But there are a few reasons why you might choose otherwise. For example, your cable boxes may do something weird with audio it sends over HDMI. You may want to avoid dropouts and other problems by going with a coax or toslink digital audio connection from your box to the XMC1. If you do, this is where you tell the XMC1 to use the coax or toslink digital audio connection instead of its default HDMI audio one. Unless you have a particular reason to change it, let's leave that set to HDMI one for now. The next two options you'll see are for lip sync delay. When your monitor or projector processes the video, it receives to prepare it for display on the screen. It often introduces a short time delay, and this delay can cause the audio and video signals to become slightly out of synchronization. Since video processing almost always takes longer, the video will lag behind the audio, so the audio will need to be delayed in order for them to line up again. There is actually information included in the HDMI audio signal that enables the processor to adjust this correctly. Setting Lip Sync Auto to On, which is the default, will tell the XMC1 to use that information to handle Lip Sync automatically. This usually works very well, so unless you notice a problem, you should leave Lip Sync Auto set to On. If you notice that the sound and video tend to get out of sync on a certain input, then you'll need to override the automatic correction and set the right delay yourself, manually. To do this, uncheck the box next to Lip Sync Auto. Once you do that, the XMC1 will let you use the Lip Sync Delay field to enter a value manually. The only way to know the correct setting is to watch and listen for yourself. So start at zero and gradually raise the value until the video and sound line up correctly. For now, we're going to leave the HDMI 1 set to Lip Sync Auto. The next option is called Button, and you can use it to assign a quick access button to this input. When you push that button on the front panel or on the remote control, you'll go straight to this input. The choice you make here applies to both the button on the front panel and to the one on your remote control. If you decide to set the button to none, you'll still be able to get to this input using the up and down arrows or the menu. It just won't have its own button. The next two options you'll see are 5.1 mode and 2.0 mode. By default, when you select an input, the XMC1 looks at the incoming signal and chooses the best decoding and processing modes to use with that signal based on the signal and your system configuration. If you prefer, in deciding what mode the XMC1 will use to play things, the XMC1 offers you several more options for how it will handle each type of input audio signal. The default setting for each is Auto, which instructs the XMC1 to choose the best mode for you. If you change that to last use, then the XMC1 will default to using the same mode it used the last time a similar signal was received on the input. Finally, you can override all the automatic settings and simply select a specific mode you want the XMC1 to use for each of the input signals. One way many people use this option is to configure the XMC1 to play movies in a surround sound mode and CDs in a stereo mode. This is something you can think about, so for now, let's leave both set to auto. Next, we'll get to the option called speaker preset. 
A speaker preset is basically a complete configuration that tells your XMC1 how many speakers to use and the correct levels, EQ settings, and other options for each. There are two manual preset plus the preset that is created by the Dirac Live automatic room correction system. The next option is level trim. Level trim simply lets you set an overall level or gain for each input. By adjusting the gain on each input, you can set things so that each of your input plays at the exact same loudness when you select it. This setting is most useful for correcting things if you have one input that always seems louder or quieter than the others. For now, since we're only configuring one input, we'll leave it at 0 dB. The final option you'll see is labeled visible. If you uncheck the visible checkbox, then this input will be skipped when you cycle through the inputs on your XMC1 using the input up and down buttons. Inputs that are not visible will still be accessible if you use the direct access buttons and can still be selected using the menu and will show up in all of the XMC1's setup menus. Congratulations, you've configured the HDMI 1 input on your XMC1. By combining the input configuration options we've talked about in this video with the speaker presets covered in the last video, you should be able to now configure your XMC1 to work perfectly with your speakers and the rest of your source components. In the next video, we'll get into a few of the more advanced configuration options.